to the connector me toys and horn <laughs> well happy Sunday and yes it is happy because uh, happy it is happy because that awful weather's broke it's nice and mild well relatively mild certainly not freezing in the back but hell the bike has been stuck in the back yard uh, since last Tuesday or Monday night I went to work last Monday because it was mild and rainy and then the bloody freezing weather hit you see that then someone in a high vis jacket in all these elderly people was bungalows you never wonder if uh, the thieving bastards trying to con little old ladies out of their life savings that's a good thing about cameras they were in paper tomorrow an old lady was conned out of £10,000 when a workman arrived said he was from the council told her to turn her taps on in the back kitchen and had made off with a, a fortune hidden in the bottom of her wardrobe very common scenario that Alright love, yeah I'm from council, yeah man and uh, yeah if you, the water's all turned brown I think there's shit in it you know turn your tap on and I'll check it and uh, you know what I mean love Alright yes, I want to go upstairs uh, Yeah that's better yeah go upstairs and do it yeah go and turn your taps on and yet they keep doing it and I once said to, to the police I said uh, I was just chatting one time, I think it was when I got done for speeding <laughs> years ago and I said have you ever thought of visiting every pensioner and send a bring, take a leaflet or it's no it's leafleting because people throw them in the bloody bin knock on every pensioner's door, there'll only be a few hundred of them you know in a local small town and say excuse me love, there's been lots of con men in the area knocking on doors saying for, from the council ring us if anyone uh, does that you know saying that you've got a slate roof or saying they're checking dodgy water and the latest one in the bloody paper I couldn't believe it in the, it was in the sun so it must be true on <laughs> on Friday it said people have been told go to your bank withdraw as much cash as you can and bring it to me because there's some forgeries we have to check if it's forged money all right, I must go now. Yeah, I'll come with you. And they go with them. I know old people tend to lose their marbles, but my mum's 79, she's sharp as a pin. she never get caught out doing that. <coughs> I don't know, we should look out for a neighbour. Have you got an elderly neighbour? Something once happened, and I lived at my mum's actually. This lad come out with no shirt and holding a screwdriver and neighbour was about 90, Mrs Sharples, little old lady. <coughs> so I knocked on the door, everything alright Mrs Sharples? Oh you're, you're here? I said well, I'm here, what do you mean? That lad said uh, someone next door has had electric shock and he wants to check me electrics. I said oh did he, what, where, where did he go? Well he went upstairs. So I went round, I went over to him, grabbed him by the neck and said what have you been doing? You want nothing, fuck off or I'll call police. I said, yeah, I'll call police after I bang your teeth down your fucking throat. And I was grabbing him like that, with my nails in his neck, ready to bang him in the mouth, and he wriggled free. I could have kicked shit out of him, but where would I stand then? And no, I didn't let him go because I was terrified. I like to think I got quite a hard punch. But you know, if you have killed someone, you get locked up and he'll get uh, compensation probably. So I went back to Mrs. Sharples, I said, I'll call police, we can see what's went on, so police come. What's he doing? Good place to stop Elvick. Oh, well, lights are on red, no, they're not. Yeah, there's two lanes, there's two lanes, you can pull out, you know, daft herbert. Yeah, police come, well, not a lot we can do. I said, no, well, what you could do is tell old pensioners don't let people in their houses. He knocked on the door and said, we'd had electric shock, holding a screwdriver. 
I said, where did you go, Mrs? Oh, he went upstairs, he went upstairs, and one of the windows were wide open. Oh, he said, he'll have done that, he'll have come back with mates at night to climb up the lamppost, or with a pair of ladders to rob her. She said, I've nothing to rob. <laughs> so she's not got her life savings in the bottom of her wardrobe. She said, he don't trust banks, so they stashed loads of cash in the bedrooms. There was one in paper, did you see that? It just makes you sick of this bloody country. I think it was in the Manchester area, a 30 odd year old gobsite punched a little old man in his 90s hard in the face and gave him a good kicking in bed. Where's your fucking money? Where's your money? Answer me, answer me. Beating to a pulp, they've got him. It just said uh, there's a trial awaiting, so it's not sorted out yet. They said it were a druggie after cash, and they all assume all people have got statues of cash. And a little old lady as well, I was adding to her, a little old lady with a big black eye. It's a society of scum. And like I keep saying, can't make sweeping generalisations, but is our society not breaking down? In fact, that's why Ringo Starr, because I'm a big Beatles fan, he, that's why he left England. Not a lot of people know that. Not a lot of people know that. But he did, he, uh, he sold his mansion in Cranley, Surrey, for 20 million and went uh, over to Los Angeles to live. Wrong indicator, Albert. And he was criticised on uh, the Jonathan Ross show. He did a concert for the, uh, when it was a City of Culture Liverpool in 2008. Can you hear me? He did a concert uh, at Liverpool Echo Arena. And after the concert, he was interviewed on Jonathan Ross. So he went back to Liverpool, that's right, yeah, for the City of Culture, yeah, yeah. How often do you go back to Liverpool? Oh, what do you mean? You don't go back for nostalgic visits? Uh, no, I was that close to going back. So you wouldn't go and live there again? Uh, no. You not miss anything? No. And it was criticised and in fact the Scousers took revenge. <laughs> and there's um, an ornamental bush, you know, torpery. Torpery, is it? When you cut private edges into shapes and the Beatles band down near Speak Airport, or John Lennon Airport as it is now. Someone snipped his head off with some shears <laughs> as a revenge attack. But no, it was revealed in a fan magazine. It said what happened was Ringo read about a Liverpool lady who was disabled in a wheelchair on her way to the shops. And a gang of youths tipped her out of her chair, kicked her, grabbed her handbag, punched her in the face and all run off. And he said, he's just sick of me to my stomach. He said, what a set of bastards. He said, if that was us in the 50s, the teddy boy gangs, we'd find out who did it, go around to their house and give them a good bloody kicking and trash their house. He said, he just sickened me. So what's England coming to? So me and Barbara decided to move to LA. Although, of course, you could argue what kind of society have they got in LA? posh parts, nice and peaceful, but there's also the bloody drug gangs and inter-gang wars, isn't there? The birds and the crypts, yeah! So, you know, I think he just went for the weather as well, our seven month long winters. He once said in an interview, yeah, I don't really enjoy putting an overcoat on for six months of the year. <laughs> so now he's in LA, it's like 80 odd degrees all year round. Yeah, so here we are, after all that waffling, where we're going. A bit silly really, but um, when I was visiting Clitheroe, yes, I'm back going to Clitheroe again, for that pub crawl. And uh, I keep saying about being skinned, being on minimum wage and a crap 30 hour contract, but I occasionally have a little blowout. Otherwise, I'd just crack up and go nuts like my poor mate Brian jumped in canal. You just thought, well, it's bills, 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 been made redundant. Sod it, we're all gonna die anyway, so why prolong the agony? And that was it, good night, Vienna. So I either do retail therapy, go to the pub, like I did Friday, because we got paid Friday, and uh, we're on 12 till 8. 
finished eight o'clock and instead of booking a taxi are you going to I said no I'm going up I'll, I'll give you a lift Felix this black lad from uh, the Congo give me a lift I drop you at pub oh, I said thanks very much for a gentleman Felix he's a right nice lad actually they're well mannered they're brought up well even Africans are brought up better than some people in England yeah, so he dropped me at pub. I said, are you not coming in? No. I said, well, when it's uh, Mad Friday, when we finish work, you should come in. It's full of drunken office girls. Really, Stephen? I said, yeah. <laughs> All dancing. I think they have uh, an artist on Black Friday. Black Friday. Mad Friday. Yeah, no, I was sat there with a pint. had a second pint. And, of course, I got hungry and got the uh, munchies. <laughs> So I looked at the menu and it's a bit pricey, but seven ninety five for a burger and then one fifty for another burger on top. It's double your burger off it. With pulled pork on, similar to that giant hot dog I had here at the Holmes Mill. <coughs> so I ordered one. I thought, well why not? I pay five pounds for a giant pizza at home, so why not get a giant burger in the comfort of a pub? So I got another pint to eat with my burger. Then I was going to ring for a taxi and go home. I thought, no, I'll have a look in Edward the Seventh. This other interesting pub. Go on, Albert. I just flashed my nightbreaker at him, fitting me nightbreaker. I'll show you when I park up. Yeah, so I went to Edward the Seventh. There's a nice landlord there, and yeah, he used to have a nice wife. I don't know where she was. Oh, you're taking pictures as well. Not just me, then. Who's interested in the history? No, is that shop part open? Sorry, right, I'll stop here, thanks. Are you considerate? Oh, it is open. It was closed before. Unless it's one of them Sunday trading things where they all close at four. Anyway, yes, I went to Edward the Seventh and had four double Irish whiskies. I shouldn't have done so I felt rather ill. It is easier to drink than scotch, though. Let's see if the Dennis truck is here. Yep. I was chatting to a girl who I bought a bottle of beer off when I was here on my pub crawl. I said, oh, Dennis. I said, I've got a Dennis and Menis uh, little dolly at home. You can have it and fasten it to the truck. I said, truckers often used to fasten uh, little mascots on. I said, I've got a mascot on my bike. Have you? I said, yeah, Grove. <laughs> and Wallace from Wallace. Oh. So I said, I'll bring Dennis. I've got a spur one. It's just collecting dust. But whether they'll, uh, they'll think I'm mad, I don't know. I'll offer it to the lady on the till. I'll show you. Uh, spare Dennis. just handed Dennis over to a couple of lovely ladies. I'll send a message on Facebook and I think you can post pictures. Some Facebook pages you can't post pictures, can you? But a lot you can. So I said, did you get the Dennis? Is he on the truck? Yeah, that's fancy few pints if there's a Sunday bus service. <laughs> no I'm on early tomorrow so no drinking. Just one way. Anyways. Don't know why I'm looking right. But you never know, you know, don't risk your life looking at signs if it says one way there's always a chance that some twerk's gonna go the other way. Like on those videos.
<coughs> Buttons are a bit stiff, I'll squirt some WD in or GT85 when I get home. No, I'm not going through the main street again and <laughs> mixing some old pictures up. I've done it to death, haven't I, this time? Why not come anyway, have a pub crawl, have a meal, have a shifty around the town? It's always nice to visit towns you've never been to, isn't it? Oh, it is busy. Thank you. Some don't stop, do they? Some don't realise it's give way to the uh, right. So there we are, drop Dennis off. A little bit of silliness. What it is, it's called Random Acts of Kindness. There was once a young lad and he started a group, Random Acts of Kindness. And they go around town centres with a couple of mates and people thought they were either mad or some kind of thugs. They chase after little old ladies and give them flowers. They were my idea. And do other things as well. You know, I can't remember what exactly, but it, no, he, he started a group called Random Acts of Kindness and then the poor lad died. He had something wrong, you know, either a burst artery or a heart attack and he died aged 20 something. I thought, you're not typical of fate, decent young lad with a nice little idea like that, and pop, dead. Hello. Simon's cleaning. It's alright, I've seen you. Hold my hand, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have a bit, yeah, good. No, I'm not going to bother looking in little. I've got 10 quid on me. What I'm going to do, go on, watch the weather forecast. If it's going to freeze tomorrow, then I'll need some taxi money. Like I said, with these damp roads, I just don't risk it if it's going to ice over. Last time I slid down the road on the ice was coming here in 1998 on my old silver wing. I fell a back wheel go when I was on that country road which leads down here. No, just leaving my hometown. I thought, oop, I up back wheel moved out to about a foot. So I slowed down and it was up here. I'll just show you where the junction is. It was early one morning about, well, I used to work days then. You know, half past seven till quarter past four, I think it was. And it must have been about minus two, but I thought, no, the roads are dry, it'll be safe. But obviously there was some black ice which made me back wheel step out. And then on this corner up here where the main A59 is, there's a black patch and I just thought it was just damp road. It wasn't, it was about an inch thick, a 40 foot length of black ice. Well, I don't know, it's black ice or thin layer, I don't know. It was a big thick layer of bloody ice. That's why the bike wasn't damaged apart. Only thing that was damaged were my left knee and the uh, gear lever and the big uh, scrape on my left pannier. Yeah, this bend here just went straight over and slid about 30 feet. And the lad stopped. Oh, yeah, it's Steve, because, you know, we're all heading to the same place. I said, well, I'll bang my knee. Yeah, big patch of fucking ice. I said, I know, where's the bloody gritters? You could move a bit forward, Albert, bloody hell. Yeah, busy woman. Few bikes out then. Can you hear me? Got to loosen the engine up. We are having grime on them. The uh, front brake pads are gripping really well. <laughs> I squirted some degreaser from uh, that astonishes it from the pound shop. 
not astonished, it's just a cheap pound degreaser in a spray, a liquid spray, you know, a trigger spray. And instead of buying that bloody muck off version for 10 or 12 pound, pound shop degreaser, it should hopefully free up the uh, brake pads if they start sticking again. Just a uh, bloody bleak midwinter. Actually, the winter's only just started, hasn't it? Officially, December, January, February. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. There stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow. Snow on snow on snow. This is always thought struck me as being weird. There's two lanes and yet cars always stop here. Even though there's two lanes and they're in that lane. <laughs> of course when I mention it nobody's done it. But when I used to come home from work there'd be a long queue there. And I'm gonna make a sign saying if your lane's clear why stop here? You knob. <laughs> Uh, it's sort of refreshing a winter ride. I don't feel cold because I'll put my two leather jackets on. My Hepcat Harley jacket. Thank you very much again, Ian. Excellent jacket, loads of pockets. And I got a cheap one, did I tell you, from the Sunday papers, 14.95. It's just a Chinese, similar style with a stand-up collar and uh, six pockets, but it's too small. But I thought, I'm not sending it back. It'll do as an under jacket, you know. Two layers, that's a key to warmth. I used to have two Corsura jackets, a normal one, then an extra size one over the top, and it just wouldn't uh, let any cold air penetrate it. Marvellous idea. I mentioned it to a Londoner, I think it was Thunder of 71. He said, You want to market that, mate? People are paying a fortune to keep warm, all the dispatch riders down here. I said, Yeah, double layer of Corsura. It's a key to keeping warm. So there you are, any manufacturers? <laughs> no, it's not exactly a new idea because I've got some double layer gloves at home. You know, twin wall gloves. But like I said, twin wall, that's the answer. They're keeping your bits warm. Glad the bleep is still working well. And the indicators are still plugged in. When I took the headlights off to do, uh, I forgot to show you the bulb didn't I? When I took the headlights off to do the bulb, renew it, I also attempted to fit a bleeper on the front and I couldn't understand, maybe we've been cold, my brain seized up, I couldn't understand how to wire it up and when I tested it, it come on like hazard lights, I'd wired something together and all four indicators come on, I was going to leave it. <laughs> But you couldn't, you know, you need, need indicators, of course. No, I only have I done that, so I unplugged everything, pushed it back in, and it wouldn't locate properly. I must have sprained the little, uh, you know, the little micro fanny. Male and female connections, a micro todger and a micro minge. So I just shoved them in and I hope for the best, but they're still working. I can't really show you a light anyway, can I? Because it'll just show up as a bright light on a on a bike video. Action cams don't pick up any any kind of contrast uh, very accurately. What's happened there? Will you tie your tracks across that grass. Playing golf in this weather. Still, so, like I said, it's not freezing. I could zap down this uh, middle, but that's where all the guns gathered, can you see? The mulch from the leaves, so I don't tend to do anything that's dangerous, although I did uh, the other month, didn't I? When I was heading towards uh, Blackburn, I overtook a, a car overtook me and he was choking with diesel fumes out of his bloody exhaust. I thought, cheeky bugger, I'll get past him. 
And I didn't knock the bloody gears down, you might know, because this isn't the most powerful of engines. It's a down-tuned fire blade. I just opened the throttle and pedal past him when there was a van coming the other way. Oops. If you're going to try and attempt a quick overtake, always knock it down a gear and back it into the red line. And then change gear back. And with that piece of nonsense, I think I'll knock it off. To save on editing, I'll knock it off for you. Thank you for watching. Dennis has been duly delivered.